Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. If you're in the market for a dual SIM phone here in the UK, then you're probably gonna be at a loss because there aren't too many out there. More to the point, there aren't many that look very good. The Acer Liquid Jade looks set to change that with its skinny chassis, its lightweight 13 megapixel camera, and that 720p display, which is encased by curved glass. It feels pretty premium, especially for a phone that costs around 180 to 190 pounds online. This isn't a full review, we haven't had it long enough for that, but it is an early review so that we can just in a more in-depth way than the regular hands-on tell you what we think. We've also put it through a few benchmarks which we'll talk about later. We're going to start off though talking about the highlight of the phone which definitely is that design. It's very light. We can actually put it side by side with an iPhone and you can see despite having a larger screen, 5 inches by contrast to 4.7 inches, it's got a very similar footprint. If we put them side by side it's just slightly wider and slightly taller. It's curved Curvaceousness makes it super comfortable in the hand though, and that screen also is impressive taking center stage with no physical buttons around it. You can see above the screen is a front facing camera and an in call mic speaker. It's not a front facing loudspeaker despite its prominence. Down below is an Acer insignia and you should be able to make out that curved glass right there. On the right hand side you've got volume rocker and on the base micro USB port. Left hand side you've got a very cool SIM card slot, so if we actually pull it out we can reveal that this is a nano SIM card slot that goes right there and next to it is a micro SD card, only expandable by up to 32 gigabytes, but if you forego that micro SD card you have that dual SIM nano SIM functionality. So if we stick that back in there up at the top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right there and a power button. On the flip side that f1.8 13 megapixel camera and flash. Down at the base it's a loudspeaker. Now the loudspeaker is actually quite a highlight, not necessarily because the sound's awesome despite having some Dolby technology on board. It's e really difficult to cover up. The holes that are drilled in are really really hard to cover up completely. So if you're holding it any which way it's not going to be that muffled and indeed the positioning of it makes your hand kind of act as a bit of an amplifier for that sound. So that's the design. We're not massive fans of glossy glossy backs. It also feels incredibly hollow. You'll be able to hear that. It's also very very uh, much like a removable back cover device. We thought there was going to be a battery in there so we kind of tried a little bit to prise it open but no don't do that because the back cover does not come off. But this is 180 to 190 pounds and for that kind of money you're not going to get anything anywhere near as slender or as premium feeling as this for a dual sim format at the very least. So if we take a look inside that screen, the IPS technology first of all looks great, it's got decent viewing angles and the pixel density is in the 290 to 300 mark which puts it almost up to iPhone territory. You've got Android 4.4.2 inside, a slightly older version of Android than most flagships coming out now, but it's a refined Android by Asus. I say refined, more like redrawn. You can pinch through to get an overview of your home screens. This is also accessible by long pressing on a display. You can add and remove home screens at will, pull down one finger for your notification tray which you can clear with that button up at the top, pull down two fingers for quick toggles. You've also got your application tray and that leads onto your widgets menu. So it's a simple enough Android experience but Acer supplements this quite nicely with quick mode, something that we've seen before. We've actually done a video on quick mode on the Liquid Z5. If we jump through to our applications we can swipe across, swipe across again and we can see quick mode. This simplifies the whole Android experience for anyone who maybe isn't used to Android, any elderly people or any kids. You can see we've got it set up in kids mode now. We can pull down from the top and we've got themes we can actually very easily swap out. So without having to go into any settings, just from the notifications tray, we can swap out the themes. All these are redrawn for the HD display so it looks very, very nice and crisp. We can jump out of this but only if we have access to the passcode which we've created as the parent. So we've made it four zeros. Having done that we can click fine and you can see you've also got a convenient mode. Tap through on that, a little bit more comprehensive but nothing too crazy. You've got access to all your applications but these are a very very simple list format. You've got a widget up top in the form of a clock widget and finally if we jump out of that one last time, enter our passcode 0000, we can 
jump into formal mode. So this is for anyone who wants to give themselves full access to the entirety of Android, but maybe without all the complication. And you have access to two widgets up at the top, Google search and the clock and weather widget. So that's quick mode. There are a few inconsistencies with it. So if you, for example, pull down from the bottom, you can still access all your main notifications and settings and therefore in turn disable quick mode effectively. Um, so Acer hasn't really thought it through. A kid could do that, for example, by mistake. But for the most part, we doubt that's actually gonna happen. It's quite a nice, good looking addition to the Acer mix. We can leave quick mode. You can see it's called fast mode there. So again, a few incongruities when it comes to the refinement of that user experience and we're presented with Android. Android that's powered along by a MediaTek processor clocked at 1.3 gigahertz. It's quad core with one gig of RAM, so it's not gonna blow any minds. If you're wondering how that performs, we can actually flip open NT2. We ran a couple of other tests and you can see it performs worse than the Nexus 4, for example, and all of the flagships out now. So this is more in line with the kind of pricing that you're expecting to pay for this, despite the fact that design and general feel in hand really does belie that. Jumping out of that also the same can be said of the likes of Velamo. So flip out of that, flip open Velamo, and you can see 1842. So if we were to take a look at the ranking, it sits above the Samsung Galaxy S3, below the likes of the Asus Nexus 7, not too bad at all for the price. You can also see it plays games pretty well. We're gonna open up Modern Combat now and we actually were playing Modern Combat at length on this um, earlier on. It actually killed our file, but you'll be able to see, despite the fact that um, it's tapered the graphics right, right down, so we can come in a little bit closer, pull right into our comrade right there. He's not perfect, but it's by no means terrible and performance is pretty smooth. This is largely testament to Gameloft optimizing for the MediaTek processor and indeed the lower powered processor. And you can see it's smooth and that's the main thing that you're gonna want. So if we jump out of that before things get too bloody, we can also um, illustrate the fact you've got that speaker around the back. We can open up a YouTube clip, for example. Why not play back one of our videos, the Passport video, Blackberry Passport, we um, unboxed earlier today um, and got some hands-on time with yesterday. You can hear it's fair volume on there. And like we were saying, covering it up doesn't actually muffle it all that much. And indeed putting your hand at the base actually does, if we shut ourselves up, it actually does um, amplify the music quite nicely or indeed the audio of whatever you're listening to. So ultimately the user experience isn't gonna be perfect. We're not massive fans of the redrawn Acer skin. It's very customizable. Young people will actually find it quite fun as well based on the fact that you can have different transition effects, etc. cetera. Um, but it's got a few holes in it. Android purists will probably pull their hair out a little bit. So what else is there to talk about? Like we said, no LTE on board, but you've got your standard Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. It's got eight gig of onboard storage. So any hardcore gamers, despite the fact it'll run games, it's gonna disappoint you in terms of being able to house a fair few on here. You've got expandability up to 32 gigabytes, but again, anyone who hoards media, that's probably not gonna be enough for you if you're into movies. Music player though, things like that, and just the odd movie here and there, it will be ample. Generally, we're impressed. The Acer Liquid Jade for the price offers something no other phone does that looks this good, and that's dual SIM slots. If you've got any questions about it, fire them in the comments section below. If you like the video, click that like button. If you like B-Tech in general, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.